All right, welcome. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm here for a short introduction to how to connect Zoom with OBS. We are going to demonstrate here our typical setup at SpotMe. So I'm going to bring up uh, OBS as a completely blank project for now. And I am already connected to a Zoom meeting. If I can make it appear big, there we go. All right, so I'm going to show everything on one single screen because I have to for the purpose of the recording to make it easier for, for you guys to watch. Uh, but ideally, we would have the Zoom window here to be on a separated screen so that we have a better resolution and it's easier to not mix up stuff um, between OBS and, and Zoom at the same time. Okay. All right. So the one thing we're going to do, we're going to start doing is that we are going to import a project, a scene collection uh, on OBS because we have created uh, some layouts by default that we want to use. So if I import, there we go, and I select on the uh, desktop here, uh, here, and here, I should have a JSON file that I can open. And this is a scene collection that comes with a few assets that we have, like backgrounds and things like that. Um, and I can then switch to my OBS template here. And there we go. We have a bit of a resolution issue. Bear with me one second. OK, that's because we are uh, working with a base Canva of 720p normally. There we go. We're back on track. Awesome. So as you can see, this scene collections comes with, uh, this is a typical template we use. It comes with a few holding uh, holding screens uh, that we always play during, uh, during projects, during live streams. Uh, it comes with a few base standard screen with a few placeholders for slides and cameras and uh, an urgent holding slides if there is anything happening. Right. So now what we're going to do is what we are going to um, to add the slides and the camera on the other end to our uh, to our preset. So I am going to take my base screen only. So this is basically meaning uh, only only the slides here. That's what we want in this specific case. So I am going to add uh, display capture here, right? I'm going to call it screen, uh, screen share. Okay, so we have this nice parallax effect. I will disable capturing the cursor. We don't want the mouse to be in the way, obviously. And then I am just going to have to resize this a little bit, make it a little bit smaller. There we go. And then I can crop that window. So I hold the uh, Alt key on my Windows computer uh, to just gently crop the window around the slides here. I'll just do a very rough cropping for now. Then I can make that bigger again. There we go. And then I can adjust the cropping further. There we are. OK, just a little bit on the left here. And that should be it. OK, so I have that window that I can move around now. I am just going to fit it on that rough placeholder we had by default. There we go. I'll just move it a little bit, make sure it's roughly centered. And we are pretty much good. So I can lock. Then I have my screen share that is appearing here in my list of of sources, I'll lock it to make sure it doesn't move anymore. And behind it, if I disable it, we still have the placeholder. I'll hide the placeholder just in case. Uh, just in case that way we have a very clean layout. OK. Uh, and now if I use my other laptop from which I'm sharing the screen, if I move my slide, I should uh, it should fit nicely in. There we go. Obviously, the, the colors and the branding is not ideal because we're reusing the same branding for the slides and the background here on, um, on OBS, but that's a detail. Uh, <clears throat> All right, so that's one base screen uh, that I'm going to, uh, 
to that I'm going to duplicate and I'd say this is my main screen only and I'll just move that up here there we go this way I have my main screen and I still have a base if for whatever reason I need to modify that one I still have the base screen here that I can start from and duplicate it again if there is any need to do so uh, when I duplicate I just need to lock again the different elements okay that's it for this part then if I take the next one uh, so here we want slides and uh, one speaker view so I am going to add a display capture again. I'm going to start with the slides. Nothing different than before, reducing the size and then uh, very quickly do a rough crop. There we are, adjusting this here. Okay, and making final adjustment to the cropping here. I think that's it. We can slightly reduce probably so that it fits on the placeholder. Again, I'm making this pretty rough uh, for a final production setup. We will want to make sure that things are more properly aligned and everything, right? Um, okay, so I can disable this, lock this one. We are good here. And then I need to add another display source. So there's an option to add window capture, but we have found that with zoom um, with zoom um, capturing the window is not always consistent in behavior sometimes it's there sometimes it's not so we prefer to default to um, we prefer to default to the display capture which at least we know how it behaves in any in any cases all right so we are going to do this uh, making it a little bit bigger here and then uh, we crop the corners probably make it a little less wide than it is actually now hide the name so that it doesn't look like it's actually taken from zoom obviously um, and roughly fit it around here there we go uh, I think with something like that we're pretty good making it a little bit bigger Nice, beautiful. Looking at it uh, and just disabling the placeholder behind it. And here we go. We have a lovely setup with a speaker and a slide share here. Same than before, just duplicating to make sure we actually save the, the, uh, base, the base scene in case we need to redo anything. There we go, moving that up there. And uh, just removing trying to keep naming consistent there we go and we are going to do just the base for one speaker because we have an only an active speaker here so it means that if we had more speakers coming in uh, we would only always see the image of the one speaker that is currently talking so the two speakers setup doesn't is not really relevant in that case so i am just going to add again display capture add the existing one uh, active speakers and we redo the same uh, the same process here. Nothing uh, nothing fancy really. Cropping very quickly, getting as precise as we can, and there we are. I'll actually take more space because we have a because we have a, a decent resolution. We can take a bit more space than the actual placeholder. Uh, locking in it, hiding the placeholder, and we are good. And same as before taking, duplicating, uh, renaming main track. And I think that this is it. Whoopsie. Uh, where did it go? Here. There we go. All right, it means that now we have a pretty good setup in terms of uh, our layouts. We have holding screens, we have slides only, presentation and sl uh, present slides and speakers, sorry, speakers, speaker only. We have an urgent slide if there is anything that is going wrong, and we have our base uh, scenes if we want to, uh, to duplicate something and recreate something that is similar but a little bit different. 
Um, the one thing I wanted to double check is the audio as well. So as we can see, we don't capture any audio. Let me enable it on my other computer. So if I'm speaking, okay, let me just reduce the sound on my end here. There we go. Okay. So if I don't speak, the sound is going down here. It's going super high. Otherwise, I'll just double check. So just to make sure our settings are correct in terms of sound, we want to have zoom to output to our speaker. Uh, to our computer speaker. So here in this case, it, the speakers synaptic audio, right? And we want then uh, Zoom uh, OBS, sorry, to use this as an input. So let's see uh, if this is the case. If I take the audio rather than default, just to make sure we capture the right stuff, we're going to take the speaker synaptic audio as well here. And there we go. So when I'm talking to that computer on the one I'm actually streaming the Zoom from, uh, running the Zoom from, sorry, uh, if I speak, obviously the, the bar is moving, so we should be good. And if I stop talking, it should quiet down and we should only see the music bar that is running. There we go, going as, as low as possible. Okay, so a typical, at that stage, a typical uh, a typical run of the show would be something like we start on this and then as soon as the speaker starts talking we will likely put the speaker full screen so that he makes a short introduction and then in all likelihood we will the speaker will start oh I forgot one thing let me just log this so that we don't risk to move things around same for this scene Okay, uh, and then yeah, we would switch to that view once the speaker starts to talk about his slides, uh, and then depending on what the speaker is talking about, we could switch between that scene with the camera and that one in case there is information that is like smaller and would require a bit of a zoom in. Uh, you're going to tell me that the size difference between this slide share and this one is not big. Uh, but if we were, for example, to take that one and to uh, very quickly edit and making that a full screen slide view, actually, um, I'll have a bit of a resolution issue, but I'll just, I'll just make it work this way, center it a little bit, there we go. Uh, if my screen only looks like that, then I can switch between this, showing something in the live stream that is much smaller and then switch back to the uh, presentation and the speaker view. Uh, that helps making it a, a little bit more dynamic here. Uh, and then if there's a break, we would uh, do that. And we can say, hey, we'll be back shortly. Going back to the speaker during the second part and then wrapping up with this. Um, the critical bit to understand, obviously, is when we are on the starting slide is to cut off, obviously, the audio coming from the desktop. Uh, we are going to have people in the Zoom meeting that are going to talk, so we don't want them to uh, to uh, to be heard on the live stream whilst we are playing the holding slide and the music. As soon as the speaker start, as soon as the speaker starts, then we want to enable the audio. And when we will be switching in any case to this, the uh, music track will be off. And at the end, of the meeting, if we go with this, we are going to cut the audio and fade in this. We don't have any more audio coming out from Zoom, and we uh, we have the music that is playing nicely automatically, right? So I think this is it for our typical uh, our typical Zoom to OBS setup. We have a few variations. Uh, if we were to run multiple speaker view. Uh, you could uh, you could switch your view options um, on a different type of mode. You could still stay on side by side, and you will have all the cameras listed up to bottom. Or you could uh, separate these uh, differently. So this is uh, this is one thing that could happen. Um, that's the main difference that we do. Uh, but we typically run it that way. One last uh, important things to make sure that we don't have any pop-up appearing on the Zoom windows because otherwise they would be seen obviously 
in here because this is a display capture. One of the things we do is that we usually open the chat and we pop it out this way and we move it, uh, for example, here on the side and we would do the same with the participant view. That way we are entirely covered uh, in case anything happen and normally no pop-up or whatsoever affecting this view at this stage, right? Okay, I think that's it at this stage. Uh, thank you for watching uh, and uh, enjoy your next uh, OBS and Zoom production. Thank you guys. Bye-bye.